Hi friends, my name is Tony Curitan. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Life Skills FYI. Life Skills FYI provides a set of core adult capabilities to manage work, family, and relationships successfully. It is designed to help build the skills adults need for life. Life Skills FYI teaches skills of planning, awareness, focus, self-control, and flexibility. They are daily living skills to promote successful independent living, skills that every adult should know but were never taught in school. Life Skills FYI premieres on Thursdays at 10 a.m. on our My Virtual Academy Facebook page and on Instagram. Today on Life Skills FYI, we are going to talk about how to use the $500 Enroll Succeed Scholarship. Okay, so if you are of the graduating class of 2020 and 2021, you have until June 2022 to use your $500 Enroll Succeed Scholarship. Students that graduated from Diploma Success, Creative Learning Center Dearborn, Creative Learning Center Highland Park, I tutor today Warren, Oak Park Alternative, My Virtual Academy, and Step Up Program. These graduates are eligible for the $500 scholarship. So if you're a graduate from one of these programs from the class of 2020 or 2021, you have until June 2022 to use your $500 scholarship. And I'm going to show you how you do it. So step number one is you need to complete your scholarship application. When you graduated, in your goodie box, you received a scholarship folder with the application inside. This is what it looked like. Here is a blown up example of the application portion. We need you to fill it out completely. You put your first and last name here, your date of birth here, your street address, your city, your state, and your zip code. You need to put a phone number that you can be contacted at. And if you have an alternate phone number, you can put that there. Name of school. Now, I've received applications where students have put My Virtual Academy or Diploma Success or Creative Learning Center. That's not the name that I'm looking for. The school name that I'm looking for is the school that you're going to be attending now that you've graduated from our program. So if you're applying to Henry Ford Community College or Wayne County Community College or Schoolcraft Community College, the name of that school goes on this line and their school address goes here. Then you'll need to sign it and put the date and in this box goes either your student ID number. So if you're enrolling in a community college, every community college assigns a student, a student ID, a student ID number. This goes right here on this line. If you're going to a program, um, one of the technical schools, like one of the CNA training programs, they normally don't have student IDs, but they do utilize the last four digits of your social security number. So if you're going to one of those programs, you'll put the last four digits of your social security number in this spot, okay? Step number two, you need to print a copy of your class schedule and your class schedule must show the following information. It has to have the name of the school that you'll be attending and the complete school address, 
You'll also have to have your class schedule, meaning the list of classes that you're taking. If you're going to a community college, um, it will be a list of your English class, your psychology class, your sociology class. Those will be the classes that you'll have listed there. If you're going to a technical school or training program, you will have an enrollment form that will have the name of the school or program that you're enrolling in. Uh, it'll have your name and your complete address. It'll have the school's name and the complete address. And then it will say that you're going to be enrolling in the CNA training program or the phlebotomy training program. And then, uh, like I said, it will have your complete name. If you're going to community college, it will also have your student ID. If you're going into a technical school or a trade school program, you'll have your social security number on there. And then it'll have your complete address and your start and completion dates. Here is an example of an student activity account summary from Macomb Community College. Number one shows here the name of the school and the complete address of the school. Number two shows the student's name and complete address. Number three over here would show the student ID number and above it, it would be their name. The number four shows the amount that your classes for the particular semester you're enrolled in will cost. It'll show the total cost of that. Down here, it will show a breakdown of what that total cost above is about. It'll show the tuition, it'll show your fees, um, it'll show how much you received in financial aid, any balances that you owe, all of that will be in this section here. That's why it's called account summary. And then below it, it will have your class schedule. Now, let me move my icon here so that I can point this out. Over in this section here, it shows the start and end date of your classes that you're enrolled in. Your classes, for example, in this account summary shows that you'll begin in January and you'll end in May. Now, if you're attending a technical school or a training program, you'll have a beginning and an ending date on your enrollment form as well. But this is an example of an account summary statement from a community college. And most community college account summary statements will be similar in this. The, as I say, the important things that you need to have on this document when you submit it is the name and the complete address of the school you're attending, your name and complete address, your student ID number, the cost of your classes, and your class schedule. Okay. Then you'll also need to provide a copy of your tuition statement, which again shows the cost of the classes that you're enrolled in. And that document should have, again, student, the, the school's complete name and address, your complete name and address, your student ID number, total cost of your classes, the summary breakdown, and the class schedule. Now, some schools will have all of this information on one document. Woohoo! That means all you have to do is send this one document in. It covers all of the information that I'm looking for, and you're done. Some schools have two documents. Some schools will have all of this information and not have the class schedule on it, or it will have all of this information with out the account summary, the total cost of the classes that you'll be taking on it. In either case, if your uh, program or your school, whether it has one document or two, I need either one of them or both of them in order to process your scholarship application. 
Step number four, once you assemble all of these documents, your completed scholarship application and your account summary statement showing me the list of classes that you're enrolled in or and your class schedule, I need you to send those documents to me. And you can do this one or two ways. You can either email me the documents or you can put them in an envelope and send it by US mail. Now, if you're going to send it to me electronically by email, you can do it either on your computer or you can do it from your cell phone. But keep in mind, if you're going to do it from your computer or your cell phone, don't just go into your student account and take a screenshot of your documents. You're going to actually have to print those documents out and then take a photograph with your phone. And the reason why I say that is because when you just screenshot it from your screen, it will not always have your student name and address there school name and address, as well as your student ID number. And those items have to be present on your document. So make sure if you are going to screenshot it, that all of those items are listed and shown so that I can adequately process your scholarship application. If you are going to send it by US mail, good deal, like I said. Put in an envelope, your scholarship application, your student account summary showing your class schedule and the cost of your classes. Put it in the mail, send it to me. The address you're going to send it to is Back on Track Education. The address is 18901 15 Mile Road. Suite 200, Clinton Township, Michigan. The zip code is 48035 and you send it attention, Miss Tone. Once I receive your documents, whether you send it to me by email or in the regular US mail, I will process your scholarship application. It takes four weeks to process your scholarship application not around four weeks, it takes four weeks. And depending upon what's going on, it may even take a little longer than that. Be patient, I appreciate your patience. Once your scholarship application has been processed, then the scholarship check will be cut and sent directly to your school, the school that you are enrolled in and will be attending. Okay, so easy peasy. That was a quick process. Again, once you decide where you're going to go to school and what classes you're going to take, send me your completed scholarship application, a copy of your class schedule, a copy of your tuition statement. Once I have all of that information, all of those documents, I'll process your scholarship application. It will take four weeks and then the scholarship check will be mailed to your school. And just for your information, you'll have this opportunity all the way up until June 30th, 2022. If you were a graduate from any of our programs in the year 2020 or 2021. Friends, thank you so much. That's all my time for today. I appreciate you for tuning in and joining me for Life Skills FYI. Um, it was very helpful information because I get calls on how to use the scholarship all the time. So I'm more than happy to, to provide this information to you. If you have any questions regarding it, please feel free to reach out to me. My number is 586-842-0558. That's 586-842-0558. Again, 
I am Tony Curitan, and I will see you next time on Life Skills FYI. And remember, always to adult responsibly.